So yeah, what's on the agenda today? I think we're going to work on Bor Borgimos here. I think I'd like to do a decent amount of work on this guy, you know, get a get a decent amount done, maybe maybe work on the fur and the beard. And we'll see we'll see about everything else, the horns. We'll see about that, but let's let's start with the beard. Or the, the loincloth rather. So for the loincloth, I've actually been doing a bit of research as to what would look realistic. And I ended up looking up like Himalayan yaks <laughs> and the kind of fur that they have, the shaggy fur of a, of a yak. And I think that's the best way to go for what we want to do here. And yaks kind of have like this this like um, blonde hair at the tips. It's almost like frosted tips like they're a boy band from the 90s or something. So let's go with that. Let's try and uh, let's try and achieve something along those lines. So we're just gonna get some some paint here. Set that up. Oh, gotta move this aside. I've got a couple projects on the go and and they're all in various states of completion. But I do want to get this kind of squared away ASAP. Well, not ASAP, but you know, sooner rather than later. I shook my paints previously, so I, we don't have to spend any time shaking our paint. At least uh, the paints that I've selected for the time being. I'm just going to get out s some various brown tones because I think that's going to be useful. And this, we'll get this, and then we'll get this, and we'll all get, we'll keep that all out, and we're gonna kind of mix between the two of them, three of them rather. One thing I've noticed that mm, people who use a wet palette, what they're like really good at keeping the paint only in the areas that they want on their palette. It's a weird thing to say, but as you can see, I've I've just sort of dabbled like some right here. And as I'm mixing, this whole this whole sheet will then get filled with with mixed colors and paints, but I find that a lot of people who who use this method, they tend to keep all of it really nicely nice and tidy, which I'm not capable of doing. The giant is looking good. Would you say it's 75% done? Um yeah, I think that's a pretty good assessment it's it, it it has mostly every every part of it has some kind of paint on it so so it doesn't look like unfinished but of course i would say only the skin has had a lot of attention paid to it in terms of like doing the shadows and the highlights and and even then there's still quite a bit more to do for that so so everything else really is is just a basic flat color so today's plan is to kind of work on that more get more get more tones get more out of the out of the browns and everything so let's let's get started so this is the this is like a very basic brown that I'm using and I'm going to kind of follow along with the brush stroke with the uh, the direction of the fur and we're not we're not painting everything on the fur now. We're just kind of following along and going with the contours of the fur. And we 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 are stopping. We're starting at about midway on the fur and then going all the way down to the to the very bottom of the fur strands. But we are not getting the very top. At the very top, we're going to kind of get darker. That's the plan, at least, guys. And at the very top, like this edge here, I'm thinking it's going to be kind of like a fur, like a whitish fur color. So we can kind of get lighter. We want to build up to a lighter color. And yeah, so with this, in my research of yak fur, <laughs> my extensive yak research, uh, it just seemed to me like 
Like there was just so many different tones on the fur. It wasn't just this flat brown, you know, it just, it just kind of had this nice gradient and it kind of went all over the place. So that's what I want to do now. It's, I want it to look a little more natural. So we'll see if we can pull that off. So there you have it. That's mostly the fur with this this pass. We don't really need to do any more. Just want to make sure the tips are kind of like taken care of. And there's parts like this leather here and I haven't really thought much about what I want to do with that. But maybe we'll just go darker. But we won't use the same kind of shadowing and shading and highlighting as I'm doing now. So now the same is going to apply to the back. And this back, the fur here is loincloth. The details are very muddy, very mushy. I did attempt to kind of add more details through sculpting using green stuff, but mm, I'm not uh, <laughs> I'm not that great when it comes to sculpting and green stuff. I'd like to get better at it actually. And you know, even at the beginning of the year, that was one of those things where I, I kind of thought maybe I could practice on, and and I have actually did. I have actually attempted to do some very basic sculpting and um, but you know it's nothing really that amazing nothing to the point where I'm like sculpting a whole figure I feel like I'm quite far away from that if I'm already having problems with like loincloth fur <laughs> but yeah the the state that this was in straight out the box with the fur it was just a little weird to me it was just a little what's the word I'm looking for it was just it's just kind of mushy the details and I tried to I tried to kind of bring out the bring it out more using using some sculpting sculpting more fibers and hairs but yeah Again, still not that amazing. But yeah, like I, I actually like this model. It's pretty nice, but it does make me appreciate like the quality of, of miniature sculpting from from like Games Workshop or other manufacturers, um, where things are just a whole lot more crisp. That's something that I've kind of harped on before. It was like just like the crispness of the details that's just something that that GW is just really good at and it seems like there's a lot of a lot of companies that are building or manufacturing stuff these days that are getting really good at it too so it's pretty exciting getting like competition okay a couple things to keep in mind for my own personal development as I'm painting here is hold the brush a little more loosely something I've been trying to practice. Got a death grip on that thing. And just going to rotate. And eventually I I'm I'm planning on like kind of painting in more detail more than than is actually present on the model via just like just thin thin strokes of strands i'm planning on just bringing out more detail like that and that's why i'm kind of painting in a in like a slashing motion just trying to like convey a bit of that that fur sense of fur with that And I think this is really going to come out a lot more once we get to like the highlights and the shadows. Right now it's still pretty mid, like all of this is very mid-tone looking and it's not too far for, removed from from the from the base tone, the base coat. Let's get a bit of this, might as well. I really don't know what this is supposed to be in terms of like the material, maybe some kind of something like a reed barbs 
twine but I figure let's just kind of hit this a bit too while we're here with this color just a bit okay let's get the back side the back side so it seems like Sony has a state of play coming up next week that's kind of exciting the announcement just came out today or was that yesterday now I'm not actually sure is state of play the one that's the more like the big one is that the big one or is that like the smaller events that are like comparable to like a comparable to like a direct Nintendo direct where they focus on maybe one or two games or like a a certain theme like indie games and then I know Sony has a bigger event I just don't know what they call it do they call that a a state of play or what do they call that I don't know so here we go again kind of slashing down and trying to create more furry texture furries And I'm hoping that some of the detail gets picked up on the raised parts and some of it I'm actually just creating the detail itself through through the paint. So right now it does have this like this kind of like orangey look, which I'm not too crazy about and and I think we're gonna get away from that eventually once we sort of get into the the lighter tones but I, I did want to get a bit of this on and then we're gonna get darker as well this is the back side of the model people don't often look or appreciate the back side but we still want to do a pretty decent job on it again this isn't a, intended to be a competition piece or anything like that so you know I'm not, I'm not really looking to go totally nuts on this but I am looking to kind of flex some of some of my skills or practice some of the skills that I've learned and get better at some things with this. And it's a big miniature too, so that's always fun to, to work on as well. Bigger, bigger minis. I like that. I like big minis. I don't often paint them, but I do find them fun. And I have a few more larger miniatures, even some older, older stuff from Warhammer. They would require some stripping, but I think I, I would be willing to strip some of my models, some of my older stuff. Um, or actually, it's it's not that they're like complete anyways. I have like a, a wyvern for the orcs. And yeah, that, that model I never finished. And it's it, it has some paint on it, but I'm feeling like let's just strip the whole thing and start from scratch. That might be fun. Maybe maybe flex some practice some more modeling skills too. It could be a thing. I really do enjoy painting old hammer miniatures though. It's very fun. Very well. It I guess there's that nostalgic factor because that's kind of where I started painting too. Even though at the time like I was still maybe too young to really fully appreciate miniatures and miniature painting, I still like the hobby. And by the time I was a teenager, we were started getting into like the world of plastic miniatures, started to transition, at least in Games Workshop, more towards plastic stuff, which, you know, I, I like too. But I definitely prefer, I definitely prefer metal, straight up metal. Okay. So now let's get some of this really bleach bone stuff and let's really try and, uh, get some variation now and this is getting a whole lot lighter it kind of has that like a it looks like a double double or something <laughs> to use coffee terms and we're just going to get and I think we might be using a, a thinner brush I think 
that might be the strat. I always say that and I end up using the same brush, so I don't know. Next, the next pass in highlights, definitely. Okay, let's use a smaller brush. What do we got? What do we got? Let's use our really, really long and thin one, uh, which I cannot locate at the moment. Where are you at? Where's my brush at? Oh, it's on the floor. One second. So today is a cloudy, overcast day here in Ontario, my region of Ontario. It's not too nice. It kind of sucks. But it's okay. Whether it's raining, whether it's the weather is good, or the, whether it's bad, we shall paint. Okay. And I'm already using my thumb <laughs> as a palette, which is not good. Let's just use the cup itself. Yeah, I'm getting a lot more control now with this thinner brush. And we just want to mark out these strands. Paint stranding. That stranding. So let's take a look here. And I'm looking to only really get the very tips of each individual strand. I'm looking to only get those tips with this, uh, with this lighter color. And we're going to continue to do that as we, uh, as we work along here. And they're going to get lighter and lighter. And when that's all said and done, we'll kind of go back with a darker tone and kind of get the work our work our way from the other end with some washes. I was watching um a garage kit painter earlier today, uh Japanese, Keigo Keigo Murakami. And yeah he paints like busts and, and vinyl statues and stuff. And he was working away at, at his uh, statue, and it was just a really amazing watching him work. And it seems to me like his paint, like the, the, the thickness of his paint is super, super thin, actually, as he's working away. Just very, very thin. And, and so your every brush stroke is more like, is more like he's slightly tainting, slightly tinting the model with the paint rather than like looking to make good coverage every single brush stroke he's just like very very faintly tinting the model and these very like quick motions actually of his brush strokes and it seemed like maybe even his brush was very very um very soft in order to to achieve that look so that's a really interesting technique and yeah i I, I'm not really sure if that's something you could apply to to Warhammer, but it is something to think about, especially with a larger model. This model being fairly large itself, too. Okay, and we're just going to continue on, working our way around and getting these lighter tips. And again, we're running into this issue of, of soft detail at parts where I'm just not 100% sure what it is they were intending to communicate with some of these, some of these details. So, you know, it looks like at times there's a single clumpy kind of of strand of hair and I'm I'm instead like doing two brush strokes 
on a single clump to kind of communicate that there's more more fibers than than is actually depicted on the model here I'm trying to at least but again it's not it's, I f my feeling is like it's not coming across as nicely as I am hoping and maybe that's because of the brush I need to get even smaller Yeah, and there's this there's a bit of a kind of yellowish mustardy look that I'm I'm picking up now, which I'm not too crazy about, but I'm hoping that that'll kind of come down and it'll kind of disappear after a few more after a few more layers after we get lighter and lighter. Yeah, it's definitely not my intention to have a mustardy mustardy looking loincloth here. <laughs> up the grip and as I said I did want to get the upper parts here to be kind of more fuzzy and more white so we're gonna try and bring that out da, da, da. One second. The added fur looks unnoticeable in the sense that it, it kind of blends with the with the with what's already there. That's that's a good thing, right? I think. <laughs> I don't want it to be too noticeable that my amateurish attempt at uh, at creating fur. I don't want it to be that noticeable. I, I'm pretty sure I might have some some photographs of the of some process stages which I might be able to find. Weirdly enough, some of this fur actually goes over the straps in a weird way and it yeah it's it's a little strange looking it blends in yeah well that's good then good good that's what we want so let's take a let's let's uh step back a bit and take a look and yeah it's becoming more defined it's becoming more defined and and you see how it's kind of flowing like this way right that's something that I, I deliberately tried to do when I was adding a more detail was kind of make it flow this way because it was kind of just really just weird and just draping down and left and right and yeah without any kind of like sense of flow and intentionality. So I tried to bring in some kind of direction to it. This guy is so big that I can't really even use the large, the large uh, mm, Citadel paint holder that I bought. It would fit this guy, but only if I put him on the base, right? And I don't want to put him on the plastic base right now because I intend to kind of do a bit more sculpting to it. So, yeah, kind of stuck in a in a quarry there where I just have to rely on this method which is fine this is what I've been using for a while now just gluing things to cups fruit cups 
Uh, Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen on Switch is thirteen nine fifty nine. Uh oh. Am I gonna add another version of DD to my uh to my growing DD collection? I'm sure that it plays f perfectly fine on the Switch. You know, maybe along the lines of the of the original PS3, which was playable, although not perf, not like not amazing, right? Especially in light of the PC version and everything, or even the PS4 version for that matter. I wonder what what runs better, uh, Dr Dragon's Dogma on the Switch or Dark Souls on the Switch? Because I have heard that Dark Souls on the Switch has some issues and uh, the thought of playing Dark Souls handheld is pretty appealing to me uh, seeing as how I have a Switch and of course uh, you know anyone who has a a Steam Deck could do the very could do the exact same thing but that requires a Steam Deck it does appeal to me but I don't know I don't know how it performs. I think it doesn't perform well, and I wonder if Dragon's Dogma might have the same fate. You know, generally, Dragon's Dogma, it's a Capcom game, so so they are kind of mindful of the performance of their games. More more than some, someone like From Software, where, you know, sometimes they just made their games and didn't really <laughs> pay too much attention to the performance. Dark Souls 3. Oh, did I say Dark Souls 3 on Switch? Yeah, d there's Dark Souls 1 on the Switch, and I think that's it. Um, I feel like Dark Souls 2 could easily run on the on the Switch as well. However, it, I don't believe that there's a Dark Souls 2 on Switch. And at this point, there probably never will be, right? <laughs> it's been too long. Dark Souls 3, uh, there's a game that I played... A decent amount of it but I actually didn't play any of the DLC I know you did and it seemed like you liked it you can see how I'm kind of starting from the bottom the tips and kind of making my brush strokes go up and my brush is kind of lifting up as we get to the, like the midpoint of the of the fibers of the strands of hair and so that kind of helps create this look where where it's getting lighter at the bottom let's wash our brush wash our brush and take stock of our progress so I think we are due to work on the next stage but I am noticing a couple of areas that that need some attention so let's address that And one thing I need to watch out for too is we are kind of highlighting up to bleach bone and that is also going to be very close to the the color of the of the hair of this giant and so I think we want to avoid making it so that it looks like the same right so we're gonna have to be mindful of that and kind of shade appropriately and, and maybe do some glazes to kind of create a difference I'll have to think about that too. But I think once we kind of go into the darker the darker hues for this this guy, I think it'll kind of create that difference.
Okay. Now let's just take an, another quick look at all the angles here and make sure we've gotten all the angles for this. And we'll clean our brush. We always got to make sure to clean our brush even though we're still using the same color. Trying to get all these, all these angles for as as overcast as it is today. I do feel a bit of the humidity, which isn't isn't super fun. <laughs> but you know, that's just how it is. If you're living in uh, Canada. Mika, just looking at, just looking at. How's it going, Mika? <laughs> okay, yeah, we gotta get darker. Gotta get darker towards the 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 upper parts of the of the fur. Pardon me, guys, if I'm not uh, talking at the moment. I just am just trying to kind of follow along these lines that I've I've painted on and continue them. Mika, just looking at Valkyrie and Orc f flyer conversions to source some inspiration from my B Brood Brothers bomber. Oh, okay. So have you found any inspiration then from what you were looking at? That sounds cool. Any new Games Workshop stuff catch your eye at the moment? I think like the big thing these days seems to be the Horus Heresy. Uh, looks like they're going to be releasing a, a new version of that. Has that uh, perked your interest at all? It seems to me like that that game system will be primarily like, you know, Marines versus Marines. I don't know if there's going to be like other alien races involved. Uh, I'm not sure. It seems like it would, right? But at the moment, everything is seems very marketed towards the different kinds of like older types of chapters and marines I guess okay let's see how are we doing with that well that definitely looks like brush strokes <laughs> alright let's just get lighter then not many conversions on YouTube but there are many on Pinterest oh so you use Pinterest you know, I actually, um, I've heard about this Pinterest, and I've, I haven't really dived too deep into it. However, another Twitch streamer was helpful enough to sort of explain 
the the usage of Pinterest and how one might want to get the most out of it. And I was like, oh, okay, that seems kind of interesting, how to use it and stuff, and what you would even want to use it for. So well, that's pretty cool. Some of my work has actually been used on Pinterest, or or someone has pinned my work to use for their own for their own reference and stuff. But I never fully understood like why. <laughs> But in in some in some respects, it's 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 just a useful tool. It seems to create to create like folders and galleries of artwork or images, such that you don't have to actually occupy any space on your own hard drive or anything. I was like, well, for that reason alone, that's pretty good. Mika, the new Contemptor and Spartan look interesting, but I'm more looking towards the squats. Oh yeah, the squats. Very, very interesting. And and we saw what could be considered maybe the the dreadnought equivalent for the for the leagues of Votan. Is that what we saw fairly recently? Yeah, but yeah, I, I'm with you on that. That's gonna be pretty fun, the squats, and I'm looking forward to seeing more more troop types from them and stuff. That's gonna be really cool. After so long we've got the squats coming back. I honestly, did you ever think they were going to come back? I honestly thought that that was just going to be something in the past. And at best, we the, the Necromunda squad mercenary, I think, that was released. Gun for Hire that was released uh, a couple years back. I thought that was going to be the extent of like squat, the squats. But that's cool. They're back. And they look pretty neat. I know, I remember you were talking about how, what was it, you, some parts of it that you didn't like? But yeah, generally for me, I think they look pretty nice. Well, there's the squats and then there's the leagues of Votan. Because in Necromunda, the squats, they are literally called squats, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, did I catch this one? Mika, Pinterest is so great for me organizing my ideas into mood boards. Yeah, yeah. I think I might actually end up uh, getting a getting a Pinterest account because for that very same reason. So yeah, the 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 Twitch streamer that I was talking about, they were showing me how they use it, and it was like for creating if you were like trying to create color schemes or even like for reference for your own personal characters and stuff Pinterest could be used for that purpose too and I was like oh that's pretty cool yeah there's there's a lot of things I probably <laughs> should probably get you know in terms of apps and stuff the hover the hover trike and the exodriller don't appeal to me but the infantry look cool. Okay, okay. Yeah, I think I think those look pretty cool to me as well. But yeah, I want to see. I basically want to see everything. I want to see the troops. I want to see more um, more units. Maybe like characters. Of course, there's always going to be some kind of like a couple of notable character models. That's going to be fun. <laughs> 